once again time for the Connie Reeves Show. And I am Connie Reeves, the hostess with the mostest here at WNRR Gospel 1380, the original one of a kind. I am so excited. No, 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 no. I am not only excited. But I am honored to have one of my co-hosts to join me tonight. And tonight I will be interviewing him. We both are Christians. We love the Lord. Uh, My other co-hosts love the Lord too. But there's something a little special about Kevin that I'll have him tell you about. So Kevin Gantos is my co-host. You know him. He's on the west coast of the country. And Kevin, how's things going? Fantastic. Thank you so much for having me on your show tonight. I'm just excited about the listeners tonight because you and I get to talk about our favorite topic and uh, truly, truly humble. I love the Lord. I really, really love the Lord. I was raised a Christian. I've known Jesus all of my life. Yes, I did stray. When you go to college, someone had kind of warned me and said, well, be careful of professors because they'll say things that's not sound for you as a Christian. I was raised, I I went to Catholic school all my life, but my parents were Baptist, National Baptist. So I would have to go to Mass because back then you could not go to a Catholic school without going to Mass. And they would, I mean, they were very, very strict. In fact, they were so strict that when we would travel, because we traveled every summer to the National Baptist Convention, I would have to go to Mass and I would have to go and get my card signed by the priest. The only time that it did not happen when it's when we traveled to the south and I was telling my aunt I was like my great aunt I was like well I got to go to mass she said baby you can't go you can't go to this church here I'm like what I have to go I got to get this paper signed. I'll be in so much trouble so my mother was like no no that's okay don't worry about it so when we got back I saw my mother whispering to the priest and he was like okay okay that's fine that's fine but I am so glad to work with someone like Kevin, and I can tell you this, we work with a group called Diamond Dynasty, and at first I was like, how did I get on this team? (laughs) I wanted to be on the WGI, World Gates, whatever it's called, so, but then When I saw his lifestyle, his integrity, because he pounds that into our heads, integrity, integrity, integrity. And you see a lot of things in business that are not of integrity. And he makes sure that, you know, I'm working with the right crowd. So, Kevin, I just wanted to let you know that I really appreciate you, and I'm glad that you're not only my friend, but you are my brother as well. So, How long have you been knowing the Lord? How long have you been following the Lord? Well, that goes back to 1987, 1987. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'll tell you, it's amazing how that came to play. You know, you don't realize, you know, as you mentioned in college, you know, you backslide, Mm -hmm. you don't even know it. You say, how did I come to this place? Yes. And then the Lord in his, his soft, gentle voice will come to you. And, you know, I just remember the moment like it was yesterday, and it was really him just talking to me and, uh, mm-hmm. and just loving on me. And a friend of mine had invited me to a renewal group, ironically, in Catholicism and the charismatic movement wow. uh, in Parma, Ohio. And 30 of us men had literally gone to a, a men's renewal weekend. And it wasn't just a weekend where you just sit there in silence. That wasn't it at all. Basically, seven speakers um, giving testimonies eating good meals, fellowshipping. And by the end of that weekend, all 30 of us had come to Christ. And, oh, uh, wonderful. And we stayed, we stayed the course. And, you know, then my wife and I got married. We had our first child. And when I first came back, my wife thought I was a Jesus freak. And then a year later, <laughs> she went to the woman's renewal. And 
again, welcome to the family is what happened. And then mm-hmm. uh, both on the same page. My son's a pastor today and mm-hmm. just blessed that uh, he's seeking the heart of the Lord. My daughter Jessica has uh, been a missionary throughout the world, smuggling Bibles into China and been to mission oh, trips wow. in Africa. And so, you know, it really comes down to, you know, you might accept Christ into your life, but and it's not about any boast because the boast lies in him, but really he will test you in those areas to, to see if you truly, truly love him sincerely and genuinely. And uh, you'll go through storms and trials as we all did. I've gone through a couple storms, my wife and I and the family, and yeah. the Lord has always the Lord's always been faithful, and uh, we've always grown it from each one of those situations. So uh, it's been an amazing journey. I'm excited how the Lord has brought you and I together, mm-hmm. and Lily, this uh, this company we're working with. Uh, there was a day they didn't have a worship service, and so we thought we should put one on and facilitate it. And today, that worship service is over a thousand people and growing, and uh, we're looking to take it to the main arena where there's five to 10,000 people on Saturday morning. So we do that three times a year, and, um, and just it's amazing how the Lord puts the right people in your life uh, yeah. to, fa- to facilitate. And so from that, we probably have 300 salvations a year uh, coming just from those three events. Oh, and, cool. uh, you know, our own dime and time, you know, nobody pays for it. We pay for it. And, of course, the, the body obviously uh, – do their best to support it, but it's been truly, truly a blessing. Uh, we've had more people come in and come to know the Lord because of that that little service on Saturday morning. So uh, it's been a journey. You know, I was literally the crucified Christ for seven years in a row at my church, and wow. uh, you know, my children were part of the play, and my wife, and and uh, we go through the stations of the cross, and all I remember, all I remember most of all, is is hanging from the cross with all the lights on except one light on you and hearing the people weeping in the audience. Oh, my God. And, uh, and so that is a place where the Lord has you in a place of humility and always mm-hmm. reminds you that, that he's first and foremost in everything we do. And so uh, an incredible journey in response to that since 1987. Well, no wonder you so uh, steadfast in Christ. Because to have played that role, you had to get into character. And that is really amazing to me. And like you said, you know, your family, you know, your wife, you you have a Christian family. I know like with me, with my parents, it wasn't so much for me to marry a doctor, a lawyer. But when they knew I was going to marry a minister, they were elated, especially my mother, because she knew that this person being a man of God, and she was watching him in church, his the continence on his face, how he reacted to things. She always told me, she said, if you marry a Christian man, you don't have to convict him. All you have to do is keep going to church, and he'll hear something that says, maybe I shouldn't have done that or maybe I need to do this and he talks to the Holy Spirit he walks with the Holy Spirit so it's a wonderful thing and then when your children come up in church my son he's an ordained minister my daughter I remember the night that she received the Holy Ghost Uh, we were at a church service and she just kept booing and crying and booing and crying So, you know, in our business, that's what I noticed, that we are free to worship the Lord. We have some very, very powerful ministers in our business, and they are essential service and products brokers like we are. Pastor John Owusu, who is just, I just love to hear him. Mm -hmm. We have... uh, Mm-hmm. We have Andre Crotch up in New York. Here, mm-hmm. when I came here, I had already met Bishop Keith 
young. And I told my husband, I said, well, I already got a church that I'm going to join when I get to Atlanta because my husband always preaches that you don't shop for a church, you join a church. So, and he has been in our business and he did not take a salary from his church for four years. And I would hear him saying this, you know, but I, it was confirmed when I went to the new membership class. So we just had recently Hezekiah Walker to join our business. And we also have, I believe his name is Jonathan McKnight. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's on TBN. Yes. So these men of God and women of God have seen something. Uh, I work with Carlene Eddings, and I'm putting on uh, conferences for her around the world called God and Business. And she calls the link up to be with God, with your business, and not worrying about it. So what, what have you found as being a business owner as an essential service and products broker, Kevin? Everything in business to me is integrity. And if you stay with an integrity, good things typically happen as opposed to the opposite. You might have a short win, a small win, of being outside of integrity, but it's, it's like sin. It does, sooner or later it's going to catch up with you. And so it's about aligning yourself with the right leaders. As a matter of fact, that's what I love about the co-founders of our opportunity, reek of integrity, always trying to do the right thing. Uh, obviously, uh, the leadership that I facilitate, you know, that I, that I work with, even in the, in the ministry side of it, when I think about Pastor Jonathan McKnight, the fact mm-hmm. that he has humility, he's in front of 30 million people on the Bible Network, and when people come up to me and want to be a part of the worship service, it's the humility I'm looking for first and foremost. Because you and I both know, uh, Connie, at the bottom line, it's the Lord that promotes us. It's the Lord that adds to us. Exactly. It's, and so when we recognize that part of it, uh, it's not about success. That's just, again, being added to you. It's a re- really about are we focused on the Lord? Seek him first in all things, all oh. things. And so, you know, even in business, I have people that that try to separate the two. I've had situations in business, and I've been blessed. I've built 13 corporations over the last 30 years. So the finance company to $650 million in, uh, in a three-year run with 2,000 people working for me. And at the end of the day, it came down to this, and that is they try to separate business. Some people try to cross the line of ethics and say, well, it's only business. And from the premise of love, not self-gain, and he already has it set up that if you serve the many, it will lead to greatness, and you don't serve the many for greatness. It's what we're called to do. And they will know who we are by what? By our love. And so it needs to be in everything we do. You can't put it in a compartment that I'm a Christian in this compartment, but not in this part of my life. It has to be in every part of your life. So therefore, it has to be in business. And if the Lord's not adding to you on a certain level, it's because he has you in a season of learning. In business, I really believe the greatest thing about an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur is that every day they wake up unemployed. Mm. And it takes the right amount of faith, right, to know yes. that the Lord's going to provide like the sparrows, yes? That's powerful. And so, and so when we have that faith, right, the Lord rewards the faithful, not the faithless. I see it as ministry. When the owners ask me, why did I even become a part of the company? I said, look, for myself, it's about ministry. And my feeling is it's a lot easier for me to outsource your company to facilitate what we were going to build anyways. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to share a mission statement to understand. Uh, I'm going to share a story. And you're going to understand why the mission statement came to place, right? Okay. But we were actually out in the ministry field, my wife, and my two children, I have actually three children, but there was two of my children and my wife. We were actually in the mission fields of Zambia. And so my daughter, my missionary daughter said, Dad, I'd like you to come. And they, they, they you know, obviously asked me to come, come. And I'm running, you know, a sizable corporation. And um, I said, okay, we'll go. So I went. And so we go, we go to the mission fields of Africa. And mm-hmm. when you understand there was 990,000 orphans, in Lusaka, Zambia, Lusaka alone, 
The oh, average God. life expectancy is 33 years old, and you're wealthy if you have more than $2 in your pocket. And the children were eating Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I'm in mm. the mission field. And as we're in that mission field, I'm looking at these young men and these young women, the most beautiful people you'll ever meet on the planet, okay? And mm-hmm. so while I was there, they stole my heart, really, is what happened, my wife and us. And so our objective to go there was ministry, but then it came time to, to become a solution to the problem of the 990,000 orphans. So it came to a place where it was about designing uh, Ted, Ted Lawler, Michael Devine, and myself actually uh, – sat me down with the president of that nation, uh, President Chaluba, and sat down with them and talked about the old cliche, we can feed a man a fish and feed him for a day, or we can teach a man a fish and feed him right. for a lifetime. Right. And so in that, in that mission field, I went out there and put together a schematic where we could build a village that was sustainable and would create enough access to where they could take it to the market to drive some extra revenue to obviously build it. But we don't want the children institutionalized. So the village today has nine of the 12 homes built. It has a community center, has a church. And more importantly, the whole objective was that the children would grow up in an environment where there's nine children per home, there's a house mom, and then there's a house dad, and where they would grow up and acclimate to the village of building a village, and they would figure out what they were good at. Someone might want to be a carpenter, the other person might want to take care of the fish or the greenhouse or whatever it is, and the objective was for them to grow out of that village and build their own village. Mm-hmm. And so where the story goes is now all of a sudden we have to come back. And I didn't mm-hmm. want to come back. Mm-hmm. And we had to come back. And when I realized that Oh, that you didn't point, want to come all, back to the States? That is correct. Okay. And so okay. when I realized I had to come back to take care of my linear business. And so it came to the point where the mission statement came into place. And we, I had a place where I had the ability to work with an incredible organization called Convene, where they bring me in. I help CEOs um, that have like maybe a $10 million business that wants to get to a $100 million company or a $100 million company that wants to get to $500 million. That's my forte. That's what I do. So mm-hmm. I would go there and help these companies. So they brought me in for an interview. But the problem with that, it was a, the objective was to bring Christ to the marketplace, which is what I'm all about. And I know you're about exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if I touch one CEO, I might touch 500 employees. And at the end of the interview, after a week of that, fixing these companies, they brought me in, and I did a pro bono. At the end of that, it, uh, at the end of the interview, this individual had a problem with me being a part of direct sales because I just started with this company that obviously you and I are affiliated with. And oh, so I'm at really? this crossroads. And, and, the, and the Lord told me, I, I'm sitting in the park, and I'm going, Lord, I don't get it. You brought me to this place. Mm-hmm. And, yes, I have this other direct sales company I'm, I'm working with, right? But I really wasn't serious about it. And he said, Kevin, you could touch one leader in direct sales that overrides 100,000 people. Wow. And, and you could touch that many lives. Let me work for you to do that. Mm. And I thought about that for a second. My gosh. Because mm. one leader can have enough influence on 100,000 people, comes to Christ, can influence 100,000 people. And anybody okay. who's listening on here, Think about what size church that would be. We have leaders in our company that override 600,000 people. That's right. Which means that one individual coming to Christ could influence 600,000 people. So here's the mission statement, nine light items. One is to fund worthy ministries worldwide. Two is to empower people to live an abundant life, free, free and clear of any financial bondage. Three is to raise up an army of godly leaders worldwide. Four is to teach each family on how to have a net worth of a million dollars and an annual residual income of $100,000, living totally debt-free. Five is to bring mom back home first, followed by dad, so our future generations don't have to look beyond the front door for a role model. Six is to be elevated to the top of the compensation plan and earn the respect of our peers to win them over to Christ. Seven is to have all the top leaders in the company take a two-week trip into the mission fields of Africa instead of a two-week cruise. Eight is to have all those leaders come back with that experience and conviction to inspire their teams to serve well in the ministry. And nine is to roll out the program that allows the average rep to participate by donating $10 a month to the cause times 100,000 reps is a million dollars a month going to the ministry. Wonderful. 
Absolutely. And that's why we're where we're at. That's where the law brought us. And it's no accident that Connie and myself are together and speaking to you, the listeners that are out there, that what is your cause? What is your vision? How can we expand the kingdom? How can you expand the kingdom? Don't be afraid to step out in faith. Just step out. Stepping out and not knowing is faith. So, so understand, just make the move. If you're a listener tonight, I know we're probably reaching someone out there that's listening. The Lord's been tugging on your heart. There's a place right now where the Lord has positioned you, and you just want to be able to step out. We're telling you, step out. Step out in faith, and the Lord will add to you. Yes, and it's will. just a, there's a blessing. This radio show is a blessing. Uh, Miss Connie Reeves is a blessing to so many. And the Lord has her in a place to where she's touching so many lives, and so many lives are touching hers as well. It's no accident. So, so I believe mm-hmm. this company is blessed. There's not been one promotion that I've seen where they didn't first give honor and glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first. How incredible yeah. is that? It is absolutely incredible. And what I would like to do is bless our listeners. We have some free samples that you can try our awesome products. And they are wellness products and healthy products that we market that is blessing people Oh, it's just amazing when you hear the testimonies. And so if you would like uh, to try our products, please go to www.connieradiohost.com. That's www.connieradio h o s t dot com and if you like what you sample i will throw in a ten dollar off gift card you can also call the connie reeves show in my private studio at five zero five six five two two one zero seven that's five zero five six five two two one Zero seven, And you know, Kevin, there may be some listeners out there who wonder, well, how is it to be an essential service and products broker and to have a Christian business? I can testify that I have the freedom to do what I want to do. We have a program as essential service and products brokers that goes around the country helping churches stay open. But we put on pastoral breakfasts across the country. We have the freedom to go to do that. We're not tied to an office, a desk, a, a schedule. This is our home business. You know, most people that are listening in, if you're employed, for the most part, I'm not saying for everybody listening in, the reality is you don't have the autonomy to be able to basically speak about Christ in your marketplace. But in reality, Christ did most of his ministry in the marketplace. And that's put throughout Scripture. To me, this business is ministry, is really what it is. And we really understand how it all comes together. We all have to be good stewards of our health and our wealth because it's all given to us the Lord. So when you think about the products that Ms. Connie Reeves talked about, you need to sample these things because your body is the temple. And so you want to be able to take care of that temple. So that's what these products do. These are incredible products. It's not about marketing products. It's about making sure that you're healthy. What good is wealth without health? And when Mm -hmm. people think about we're talking about money tonight, let's put it this way. This is very, very key. Ministry costs money. The Bibles cost money that we smuggle into China. The shoes cost money, you know, the airline tickets and all of that do ministry throughout the world. And we get it. Charity starts at home. And that's a great place about this business. But to be able to be in an environment where you can focus on what you need to focus on, and that is when we looked at compensation plans, We enrolled in 22 companies in 24 months with a team of CPAs Mm -hmm. and attorneys, and this is the one we picked. This is the one we decided Mm -hmm. to lean our ladder against. So if you're listening in tonight, trust me, you want to get back to Ms. Connie Reeves 
at least do your homework. What you do with the information is totally up to you. And you're saying that you're asking the Lord to give you an opportunity, a way out of your situation. And this might be the very solution to that. The call to action tonight is, you know who you are, you're listening. All we do is we help people save money on essential services. So we teach people how to turn their bills into a paycheck. So we're redirecting revenue. What better place to be able to build ministry than redirecting revenue that people have to pay for? And we're coming into a huge recession, not to be a doom and gloomer. I mean, the, the bubble's popping, all of that's happening. Mm-hmm. You're going to be the basket when people are figuring out what to do. You can be positioned to help a lot of people in a lot of ways. And, and I know there's, there's people listening right now. You know who you are that are saying, you know what, is, could this really be the answer that I've been looking for? The only way you're going to know is take a step of faith, reach out. Scotty County Reeves is going to share the information again. Get some free samples. I mean, you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And, again, the ball is in your court, and we're here to help you in every way we could. And the good thing about it is that we are global. You know, you can see what's going on with the economy, with Wall Street right now. But when you have a global company, there are people out in the world who need your products, who can uh, become part of your organization. Um, So this is an opportunity that you at least want to take a look. And you can go to www.connieradiohost.com. Dot com. That's www.connieradiohost.com. You can ask for a free sample of our Montevita healthy drink that tastes like coffee, and it's absolutely delicious. We have a milkshake, a vanilla shake called Lean that's full of protein. We have the fuel that will help you uh, keep your energy up. In fact, I tried the fuel for the first time just the other day, and I was wondering why the fast just kept going, going like the Energizer Bunny. I went to the gym. I came home. I was doing this. I was doing that. So it's really, really good. And you can also get a $10 gift card if you like to try the samples and some of our other products that are part of our wellness. Or you can also call the show at 505-652-2107. That's the Connie Reeves Show at 505-652-2107. And if you would like to listen to some of our previous shows, please subscribe to my channel at Connie Reeves Show YouTube. That's Connie Reeves Show YouTube. So I thank you so much, Kevin, for this time that we've spent. And all we're trying to do, ladies and gentlemen, divas and gents, is to educate you on how to make money, get money, and save money. 